Now, I reckon it's fair to say that when most car programmes get hold of something like this lovely 206 GTI, the first thing they think of is where can we film it? We need rolling hills, dramatic backdrops and winding country roads. But let's be honest, something like this is going to spend most of its time darting in and out of, if not stuck in, city traffic. That's why we're going to be filming it right here in the centre of Manchester. That should be fun. Now, even before the 206 left the showroom, the people at Peugeot had a lot to live up to with this car, as it would be sitting in the same market that the all-conquering 205 GTI crowned, a car renowned for its great engine and superb handling, not to mention the much-loved styling. OK, now, just before we go for a drive, well, it's a little-known fact that before my presenting days and before the estate agent days, I was, I'm not proud to say, but I was a boy racer through and through. So just to try and recapture those slightly embarrassing days of my youth, quick change is required. Sorted, let's have a go. Now once you get behind the wheel, it... Oh, sorry about that, getting carried away. Now once you get behind the wheel of this car, it's clear that things have come on a long way since my old RS Turbo days. It feels really safe and solid, and I'm sure that's in part to the amount of crash protection engineering that goes into the body shell. Another great feature is the amount of head and leg room. It really is quite comfortable for me, although quite whether anyone will be able to fit behind me on that back seat with my seat's here, but you can't have everything. Another feature that I like that just emphasises that this is a GTI is this lovely alloy gear knob and the alloy foot pedals. Makes it feel a little bit special. And so onto that thing that boy racers dream and talk about non-stop. Not to 60 times and brake horsepower. Well, up front, we've got a two liter engine giving us just over 130 brake horsepower, and that results in a 0 to 60 time of about eight seconds. Now, that's not neck snapping by today's standards, but it certainly isn't slow, and the engine does pull extremely well, especially 30 to 40, 50 to 70 on the motorway. There's bags of torque there. So how much is it going to cost you? Well, first of all, insurance, which is a big factor on a car like this. It's in Group 14, which is if you've just passed your test, it might be a bit out of your league. But in terms of cost for the car, well, it's about £14,000, and that gives you alloy wheels, you get the two-litre engine, CD player air conditioning, so it's quite well equipped, really, for a car in this class. So, performance. Well, I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed. It does ride well, and the suspension is firm and sporty, but just the steering, it's just all just a little bit uninvolved. And I think for a car with a GTI badge on the back, well, I want to feel more in there. It's not got that go-kart feel on the corners as some of its competitors have. Fantastic, all these measures to make your car go like the wind and all you end up doing is just sitting in traffic. At least I've got a CD player. So maybe it's just me, but I always remember my hot hatches were just a bit more exciting than this. But perhaps it's a case of the older I get, the better I was. But even if it hasn't set me on fire with the performance, I still think it's the best car to be seen in when you're stuck in traffic. And just before I go and get stuck in traffic, I can tell you about next week's car file. It's another showcase and we're featuring Saabs. We've got the 9.3, the 9.5 and some estates in there as well for good measure. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.